Today we're going to the Colorado Wolf and Wildlife Center to see some pure wolves and who knows, maybe pet some too. Give it to her flat palm. Come up to here, that's fine. She <sighs> loves to come out and meet people. Raven especially is doing very well with this. So as you saw, she was doing great. Um, so we're hoping that she will continue to do so and have a lot of fun with that. Silly babies. Are there any questions so far? So Denali is eight months and Rain is a year and a half. Or a little bit over, but not by too much. What's their diet? Diet, yeah. So we do feed them an all raw meat diet. It's going to be mostly chicken and beef, whatever we get donated. Sometimes donations can include things like deer and elk every once in a while. I will admit they're not the biggest fans of deer and elk though, which is kind of funny because that would be their usual. over to the right. Isa is the white wolf over here to the left. Now, Arctic wolves' native ranges are going to be the northern parts of the world. A place like uh, northern parts of Canada, or Canada, like caribou, muskox, Arctic lamy, Arctic hare. Every once in a while, rarely a few of these things will lose on very super rare occasions, but they do need things a little bit different. Now, you know what that means in the case? For Arctic wolves, there's two big <laughs> 
You know what that means? These Arctic wolves are actually not going to be born white in color. They are going to be born, and there are those wolf kisses for you. There they are. <laughs> not bad at all. Um, Arctic wolves are not going to be born white. They will be born darker in color like all wolf species and subspecies. <laughs> and so, um, and so they're not going to be born in that white color. However, Issa was born white, but he has a genetic mutation as well as a skin mutation for his pink nose that he has. Now it got bigger the older he got, so he just has that pink nose and it makes him extra handsome. Miss Arenda, that beautiful female right there. Huh? Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have any on me. I don't have a drink bag. Sorry, Miss Arenda. But that's okay. You should be getting breakfast soon, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully. But yeah, so pretty, pretty good, pretty awesome. He's just a very shy boy, so he likes to kind of just very slowly come say hi. Don't you good girl? Yeah, she's a very good girl. Now, of course, Arenda was also part of the Ambassador Wolf program, like Rain and Raven were, or are part of, I should say. But two years old wolves sexually and mentally mature, and they become neophobic or afraid of new things. And so, of course, different types of stuff can be scary to them. And so, we don't force our animals to do anything they don't want to do. So, Miss Arenda happily self-retired at the age of two years old, but she does still love to meet people on interactions. So, she is very well known for having a very quirky personality and showing you her love and affection through those open mouth kisses. She has given the nickname of Jurassic Girl. She likes to talk a lot. She starts out 90% of her talent around here, so she's got lots to say all the time. Right, Miss Tana? Go, go, go. All right. And her other nickname is Tiny but Mighty. So, so the uh, majority of our wolves, they have the ability to actually come out of their enclosure and walk on all these turns and colors through time rotation, where they're able to go to other enclosures when there are no animals in their court to go and explore and get different scents and smells and all kinds of fun stuff. Now, Navi, he walks very much like you. Uh, with Tala, on the other hand, she likes to just sprint everywhere. <laughs> That's fun uh, with Tala. And Navi likes to play safety. <laughs> well, there are quite a few other wolves, but we like to play a game of chase. It's really fun. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Off he goes. Next door live one of our critically endangered Mexican wolves. After 50 plus years, there have been zero deaths to humans by wolves. So you're not going to get attacked by a wolf. You're going to be perfectly fine and you're going to be safe. Um, cows, cows on the other hand, and light up the coconuts and dunny machines. There are about 150 people that die every year from getting hit in the head with a coconut. And about throughout the entire United States account for less than 0.2% of depredations in the whole U.S. And in the northern Rocky Mountain region, less than 0.1%. It is even less than that. So depredations with wolves don't occur very much actually. Anything else, 99% of the time is going to be things like birds, domestic dogs, humans, disease, starvation, weather, things like that. And majority of the time as well, going to be something like a respiratory disease, especially for cows. That's going to be a really, really, really big thing with that. So what one of the things that's going on right now, especially with that plan being put in place, is something uh, called a... Um, compensation plan of course for ranchers and so there's going to be that compensation plan which is really good really great so if for whatever reason there is a depredation done by a wolf that rancher will be fully compensated full market value for that animal and not only that but our center is also working together with a group called If you like this video and want to learn more about wolves, wolf dogs, and dogs, 
please hit the like button and subscribe.